Foster Bell. It's a rather intimidating prospect to follow on from that very learned and literate member, one of the most distinguished alumni of alumnus of Otago University, my old university, but also Harvard. Mr Cunliffe's a very literate man. Does he love words? Yes, he does. Does he love the sound of his voice saying those words? Absolutely. But we here tonight are, t are talking about vote education in this appropriations debate. And I think this government is doing an excellent job in improving the educational standards offered in the New Zealand public system. Sir, Mr Cunliffe asked a couple of rhetorical questions in his contribution this evening. He asked, and, he, and I will concede he gave us uh, the benefit of the doubt in thinking we were motivated uh, from a position of taking the best interests of New Zealand's learners and children and students to heart, and that is the case, I can assure uh, Mr Cunliffe. But he did raise the question as to whether our policies would implement uh, the goals of achieving what we set out to achieve. And I think the added investment made in Budget 2015 in the education vote will go a long way towards providing better services and better outcomes for New Zealand learners. Take, for instance, the $244 million for new classrooms and schools. That's seven new schools, four major expansions of existing schools and over 240 new classrooms rooms for New Zealand schools. This, sir, uh, will provide modern learning spaces for uh, children in the New Zealand um, compulsory system. I'm particularly proud of the extra $62.9 million that my colleague Minister Nikki Kay referred to. Um, this is for special education, those children who have the highest needs and are the most vulnerable. And this will include services such as additional teacher aid support and the provision of speech and language therapy to those children who need that little bit of extra help to be able to achieve and succeed. I'm pleased to see an extra $42.3 million going into school operational grants to help the smooth running of our local schools. And the question I guess uh, we could also ask is what do people in the system actually think of this? Well, sir, I want to quote from a message I recently received. It's an email, and unlike the opposition, I'm not going to name the gentleman, but I can assure them that he's not Gene Simmons and he's not John Kerwin, who was also referenced uh, by uh, the opposition this evening. This is a real person, um, a staff member at the NZ Post-Primary Teachers Association. And I don't want to quote it in full because I'm a, oh, well, I'm a humble person. He's very complimentary. But Ms., uh, he goes on to say, Minister Parata has been great recently with her support for teachers, and I'm really pleased to see it's a message that others in the National Caucus are taking to heart. You also showed a really good understanding of the educational success programme, which, as you know, the PPTA supports. It's a pity that there are still people mistakenly characterising it as some form of competitive performance pay, which has meant that we've taken flack from some of our more usual allies. I presume they're referring to the Labour Party and the Greens. So, sir, the post-primary teaching profession is in support of our programme, which implements um, our targets of achieving 98% of ECE enrolment particularly around the 85% of 18-year-olds who we want to graduate with NCEA Level 2, that's the equivalent of the old sixth form certificate, and also our target eventually of getting 60% of all 25 to 34-year-olds accredited with an NCEA Level 4 qualification. That's a post-compulsory qualification. Sir, in the local context here in Wellington, we're going to see a new ICT graduate school added to the uh, existing high-quality tertiary institutions we have, Victoria University, Massey University, Waltec and Whitarea, um, and other private training establishments, such as the Campbell Language Institute, which brings valuable uh, export education dollars into Wellington and provides a useful experience to both those international students who come here, plus the New Zealand students who are exposed to the, the, in, the opportunities of having colleagues who come from China, from Vietnam, from Japan, from Europe, in fact, from all over the world. Sir, this government is doing a lot in the education sector. There's a lot to be proud of. There's work remaining to do. And the feedback that I'm getting both in the Wellington Central electorate and around New Zealand as we visit on education select committee visits is wholly positive about the efforts this government is making.